with our daughter's wedding and our last week's vacation, it's been, uh, haven't been in the pulpit for the last three weeks. I want to offer a word of thanks for those that have brought the messages uh, and helped the services go forward. Patricia D. Giuseppe, our associate pastor, and also Sandy Moore, who is a lay speaker in the Harbor District of the United Methodist Church. Also want to thank David Brownlee, retired United Methodist pastor, who helped out with the service last Sunday, and all who all do so much on an ongoing basis to make these services go forward. Uh, I'm indebted to you all, and thanks to each and every one who helped these things happen and helped things move forward. It is good to be back with you uh, again today in this capacity and here in the pulpit. Today, I want us to look at forgiveness. Forgiveness is hard. No matter what the details of the storyline is that force me to decide whether I forgive or whether I don't, even though the details change, the overarching storyline, with the rarest of of exceptions, is the same. Somebody's hurt my feelings. They've offered no apology. They may not even be aware of it. Or even if I've tried to deal with them regarding this and share with them this grand defense that they have laid at my feet, they might not think it was an offense at all. They might have thought they did, have done nothing wrong. So now my feelings are deeply hurt. That's usually the storyline, isn't it? And from there, we feel this distance between myself and this person where once there seemed to to be no distance. Now there is this uncomfortable distance. Because my feelings are hurt and therefore I'm upset with them, maybe I keep my distance from them. I try to measure whether or not they're going to be at this place or in this gathering to which I would like to go. And if they are going to be there, then maybe I don't go. Or if I do go, I try to be sure perhaps to stay on this side of the room if they're on that side of the room. That's kind of how that often plays forward, isn't it? Forgiveness is hard. I think what makes it hard on the surface is the very fact that we're hurt and they haven't acknowledged that hurt or certainly haven't acknowledged their part in it, and so therefore, forgiveness, because I'm still hurt, forgiveness becomes hard. Jesus told a parable that was all about forgiveness. This particular man, as Jesus tells the story, owed a lot of money, a lot of money to the king. He couldn't pay it. He goes to the king and says, look, I just, I know I owe you this, this debt. The debt is by rights mine, but I just, I can't pay it. So have mercy on me. The king does. He doesn't set up a payment plan for him. He doesn't make some kind of deal with him. The king just, with the wave of a hand, forgives the man this tremendous even outrageous debt. It's gone, just like that. A few seconds ago, he owed more than he could ever pay, and now he owes nothing. The debt is gone. The story goes forward. The man is leaving the king's presence, and as fate would have it on his way out of the king's presence, he runs into this guy who owes him money, far less money than what he has just been forgiven, way less money. The man makes of him the same request he had just made of the king. Look, I can't pay this. How about if you help me out and show mercy on me? The man who has just been forgiven a lot of debt refuses to be merciful. He has the man thrown into prison. 
The king finds out about it and flies into a purple rage. He has the man to whom he had just forgiven much called back into his presence and he gives him a severe tongue lashing and has him thrown in to prison too. The point that Jesus was making in this parable, he sums up at the end. That if God has forgiven me, How can it be right that I don't forgive others? In fact, Jesus put it this way, my paraphrasing of it, that it's going to be hard for me to live in the forgiveness of God if I'm not forgiving towards others. As I hear this story, it makes it very clear to me that forgiveness for the followers of Jesus, that would be us, is not optional. Forgiveness is hard, but from what I hear Jesus saying, we got to do it. We have to be forgiving people, or else it will be hard for us to recognize the full forgiveness of God toward us. The central message of the New Testament is this. Everything I have received from the hand of God Every blessing He has bestowed on me, I have because He has forgiven me. I'm not blessed by God. I'm not honored to be part of God's family because I have earned any of it. I don't have it because I'm good enough now, because I'm trying harder now or because I go to church now or even by measure of great strength read the Bible on my own time now. Every blessing I have of God I have received not because I've earned it but because God has forgiven me every debt I have owed to Him. If that indeed is the case, if that indeed is the central message of the New Testament, and it is, if everything I have from God I have because He has forgiven me, then how could it possibly be that I fail to be forgiving towards somebody else? Now, on a spiritual level, I get that. I get that. But yet, I also know that forgiveness is hard. I've been hurt. They messed me up. I have a right to be mad, and I do. I can stay in the middle of that if I so choose. But where does it get me? I stew at that point in my own version of bitterness. How do I win? Here's one of the things that I think makes forgiveness so hard. That we confuse forgiveness with reconciliation. We think that those are Exactly the same thing. Let me contend to you they are not. You can't have reconciliation without forgiveness, but you can have forgiveness without reconciliation. Let me share with you how that works. Just just give me a minute. First of all, let's define reconciliation. Reconciliation is the ideal. That's when all the past hurt forgotten, apologies are offered all around and accepted. We have that, I love you man, kind of moment. Some of you remember that commercial. And then everything is well. All the hurt is at least beginning to go away. And we're at a place where we can go forward. That's reconciliation. 
the relationship is restored. We often mistakenly think that unless reconciliation is happened, then therefore I cannot forgive. Often the church has played a role in our teaching and the way we talk about forgiveness as if that's completely, totally the way it works, and it is not. Reconciliation doesn't always happen. Sometimes the apology from the other does not come. Sometimes the acknowledgement of the hurt that they have laid at your feet does not come. And the distance remains. Reconciliation doesn't always happen. In this world, even for us followers of Jesus, we don't get to reconcile everything. Sad but true that all of our wounds this side of the kingdom don't always heal. Even Paul said that he bore in his body the marks that came from serving Jesus Christ. All of our wounds this side of the kingdom do not heal. Reconciliation doesn't always happen. But even when reconciliation stumbles and falls, we can still live in forgiveness. That sounds strange, I know. But let's consider what forgiveness is at its most basic. Forgiveness at its most basic, and let me say this real quickly, if reconciliation would be a danger to you, you need to rethink that, but you can still live in forgiveness. Forgiveness at its most basic means this. Even when reconciliation isn't happening, I can forgive those who hurt me at the most basic by determining in my own heart that I'm not going to wait for reconciliation for my life to be okay. We want reconciliation. When it can happen, reconciliation is a wonderful thing. Yes, let's do it when the time is right and when we can. We want everything to be made right. But forgiveness at its most basic, even when reconciliation does not come, would mean saying this, that I am going to let it go. Not that it's okay. Not that what happened was all right. But I'm going to let it go to this degree that I'm not going to wait for that to be right for my life to go forward. How often do we stay tied to what happened to us last month? For that misplaced word offered to us last year or ten years ago. How often do we stay tied to that? How much energy of today, how much joy of today do we expend waiting for that to be made right. Think of forgiveness this way, as untying myself from that and saying, I'm not going to wait for everything, all the hurts in my past to heal and be made right before I'm okay today. It doesn't mean that what happened is all right. It doesn't mean you like it any more than you did before. But it does mean that you're deciding that your life's going to be good and not dependent on everything being made right. I'll tell you what else it means. It means that I'm looking to God as the source of my joy instead of looking for my joy to everything around me being made right and okay. It's amazing what happens when we do that. You know how when you pull the plug on the drain of the bathtub and all the water that was there begins to go away. That's the mental image I have of what happens in my life when I say, you know what, I'm going to be okay today. I'm going to look to God for my joy instead of waiting for this to be made okay. 
It helps me to begin looking for my joy in the right place, which is not having all my past hurts made right, but to the presence of God who is with me always. I need to be looking to God for my joy, not to everything around me being made well. I do what I can, but all of it's not going to get fixed. And in those places where it's not all going to get fixed, I can look to God for my joy, and then the bitterness begins to drain away. When that happens, it puts me, strangely enough, and I never even saw this at the outset, but it puts me in a stronger position to reconcile with the relationship if opportunity presents itself. Because then so much of the bitterness is gone from my heart and in my life. I'm not living to the bitterness. I've already been made okay. And then if opportunity to reconcile comes along, I'm in a stronger place to do it. Some of the roadblocks that we sometimes feel. When we enter into this most basic level of forgiveness, saying, you know what, I'm not going to wait for that to be made right. God's going to make me okay today. Some of the roadblocks. Sometimes we feel like that whenever we do that, whenever we say, you know what, I'm going to begin to let the bitterness go. I'm going to decide to be okay because God is with me, not because everything around me is just right. Sometimes we feel like we're letting the person that did us wrong off the hook. Again, like we've said before, not, we're not saying that it's okay. But what it is saying is that I'm not giving today's joy away to my past hurts. I don't know if any of you have seen my office. It's quite a sight. I've never kept an orderly office, never will. I have files that are sitting around. Some of them I have no idea what they are. Most of them I do. But I keep them under the mistaken notion that one day I'm going to need the information that's in those files. And so I wind up Keeping these thoughts. So I got files everywhere. I got, we, we might have two or three church members that are lost in that office somewhere for all we know. I operate on the theory that the floor is the largest shelf in my office. Here's what I need to do. Here's what I would best serve doing. Most of the stuff I got sitting around here and there, I'm never going to use again. It doesn't do me any good. Keeping it just helps me get in my own way. It just, it, it just, it, it just creates more stuff that is not usable for my life and not usable for my work. So if I would just let it go, if I would just... Get rid of it. It would be better. When you decide that you're going to be okay, not because everything is right, not because you've had every apology that you would want and that everything that you'd like fixed is, when you decide that I'm going to be okay because God is with me, Not because everything is fixed. You're letting stuff go. You're not letting them off the hook. You're letting you off the hook. Think of it that way. You're letting stuff go that is getting in your way, that is stealing today's joy. Let's pray together. Lord, we hold on to a lot of stuff that's not made right yet. Help us instead to hold more tightly 
on to you. Even as we make right everything we can and work hard at it. But beyond that, Lord Jesus, help us to look to you and to let go of things that wind up ultimately getting in our way. Help us to be open to reconciliation, but even short of that, when that falls empty, help us to forgive. Remembering how amazingly you have forgiven us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.